Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science, and we get so many questions about serum formulas in particular. I've run live presentations, we've got loads of serum formula examples on our channel, but we still get a lot of questions how people can make their own. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to write your own serum formula. I'm also going to talk you through some really important steps, and there is a base formula from which you can work that you can contact us, info at personal personalcarescience.com.au so that you can get access to and get making your own serum formulas and adjust the base formula to suit your individual desires, needs and ingredients that you can source. Now one of the first things that you need in your serum formula is a water continuous phase. The type of serum formula I'm going to talk you through today is a gel-like serum formula. So we have water as the continuous phase. Now it's really important that your serum formula contains a humectant. A material like glycerin or propane diol is perfectly suitable in your serum formula. This helps with delivery of your actives where they're small to the mid layer of the epidermis. It's also really important to have a humectant in your formula because it provides some moisture and suppleness to the skin. The next really important ingredient in your serum formula is your gum. Now, the gum will impact the viscosity of the serum formula, also how it appears and how it feels on application. Now in this particular example, I'm just using a standard xanthan gum. And that's because it's a really stable material, it's very easy to access, and when you companion it with the lipids or the oils that we're going to use in this formula, it reduces any residual tack. So it's a great all round ingredient. Although if you can access more elegant materials like a silly gel or eco gel, they would also be fantastic replacements for the xanthan gum in this formula. Now we're going to use a relatively high input of xanthan gum in this formula and that's because we want to build viscosity and stability. But again, don't worry, this amount of xanthan gum could normally feel quite tacky in a gel. But because we're going to be adding a fair amount of oily based substances to this formula and no emulsifier, the oil will help reduce any residual tack or stickiness that the xanthan gum would normally cause. Now in your basic formula, you'll see that I've written in to use 3.5% of plant oils, esters, or caprylic capric triglycerides. These are going to impact how your serum formula feels on the skin after application. They'll also help mitigate any stickiness from that xanthan gum, so they're a really important choice. Now a lot of people when they're just starting out will tend to want to use a lot of natural plant oils, but plant oils can feel really heavy and even drag a little on the skin. So it's a great idea to mix and match some of your lipids. Use some caprylic capric triglycerides, use some esters and perhaps use a small input of plant oils here. This will help build your marketing story, it will feel great on the skin, and it will really make it a pleasant experience for the consumer on application. Next, let's talk about the actives and extracts that you want to use in your formula. Now another mistake I see when a lot of beginners start out, and that's simply because they don't know any better, is that they tend to overuse the actives and extracts in their formula. So in my example formula and base formula I've provided for you, I've written in 5% combined total of your extracts and actives. Now extracts are materials like your glycerin based herbal extracts. You could choose to make that 5% up totally from your glycerin based extracts, but it's a better idea to use some actives and some herbal extracts to get the best results from your serum. Ultimately, that choice is up to you, but there's a couple of things I want you to remember when you're choosing your actives in particular. Some actives need very specific inputs to perform the way you want them to. So this means that you'll need to look at the supplier data for their recommended input rates. And if you're relying on clinical results and clinical efficacy from the supplier data, then please read their information carefully to make sure you're using the same amount of active in your formula as they have to get the clinical results. You can see more about this concept in my video, how to choose the best active. So this input would be determined by the materials input that's required to be efficacious. 
For example, niacinamide or vitamin B3 works extremely well with an input of 3%. This is the example I'm going to use in my base formula so you can see how we would write it into the formula. I've also listed low molecular weight hyaluronic acid as another addition on top of the humectants that I've used earlier in this formula. And this is to really boost suppleness and provide great hydration. It will also give some really great instant glowing effects to the skin and consumers love it when they see some instant results. Now I've limited this to 0.5% as a powder and I'm going to add this in and it will mix through and dissolve. Don't worry when you put your formula together if you see that the low molecular weight sodium hyaluronate is a little clumpy when you first add it. It will hydrate fully. And then I still have a remaining 1.5% that I can use a variety of glycerin based extracts. Now a couple of other things when you're choosing your actives. Be very careful because there are regulations that limit the input of certain actives like vitamin A or retinol and definitely limit the inputs and use over acids. I have plenty of videos about how to use cosmetic acids with some limits to help guide you but just be careful these materials are regulated to ensure consumer safety. I also have some videos on various other vitamins like vitamin A serum and vitamin C serum. So please watch those videos and contact us for those formulas if you're interested in creating those types of products as well. Just also be careful with your actives because a lot of actives may be limited by the final pH. For example, vitamin A or retinol is not only limited by regulations, but it also needs a pH around 6.5 to 7 in the final formula to be stable. Also, using a material like ascorbic acid is not a good idea in a serum because ascorbic acid is one of the least stable forms of vitamin C. So you could find that your serum changes color early, starts to smell bad, and just isn't nice to use. You could use other forms of vitamin C like sodium ascorbyl phosphate, but again, it needs a pH up around six to seven to again be stable. So the final pH of your formula and all other ingredients that you use in your formula need to be selected to suit the pH requirements of your active. This is really important, so check for this information in your supplier data as well. When you're using glycerin based extracts, you don't have these sorts of incompatibilities to deal with. So they'll generally be fine at a normal skin friendly pH around 5.5. So in the example formula I've provided you, I've used 3% niacinamide, 0.5% low molecular weight sodium hyaluronate and 1.5% of glycerin based extracts. You'll find this will give a really pleasant sensory experience and some great results for all sorts of consumer types. Next, I've got my preservative. Now I want you to be really careful if you alter the preservative that I've listed in this formula. There is a big misconception out there that all preservatives should be used at 1% and that's not correct. It is true that several preservatives do work best at 1%, but some that might be far too much and for other preservatives, it may not be enough. Your serum is a nutrient rich formula, which means it will readily grow microorganisms if you don't preserve it well. And choosing preservatives can definitely be a very tricky topic for cosmetic chemists. I've got various blogs and videos on choosing the right preservatives because it is a really important decision. In this formula, I've used 1% of GeoGuard ECT and in the formula sheet, I've provided the inky name for that as well because your suppliers might call it by a different name. Now, just be careful, this preservative is pH limited. So I've made the final formula, the pH of five to 5.5 to make sure it's a great pH to suit my preservative to get the best performance out of it, as well as suit the actives that I've selected. Just remember if you choose other actives or a different preservative, you may need to alter that final pH. So please check that carefully because you don't want to grow contamination in your formula and you want to make sure that your actives are doing their job. And this is two things a lot of new formulators just don't realize when they're putting their formulas together. 
I've also made an extra special note of it in the formula sheet for you so you can't forget to check it. Finally, I've added a small input of mixed tocopherols. This is a really effective antioxidant. Tocopherol acetate will not protect your formula, while mixed tocopherols will provide really effective antioxidant protection. Just remember your antioxidant is not your preservative. It helps stop the product from going rancid or oxidizing, especially if you're also going to use some essential oils. I have listed out some essential oils to make sure you don't include, and that's because they have photosensitivity issues. Just because an ingredient's natural doesn't mean it's safe. So I've specifically listed out the essential oils you must avoid because they can cause darkening or staining of the skin if exposed to sunlight. And of course, if you're using essential oils, you definitely need to make sure you use the mixed tocopherols to help protect the essential oils from oxidation over time. As the final step, I've listed out your pH. And again, just a reminder, I've provided the pH in this formula to suit the preservatives and actives that I've selected. Now the method is relatively simple. You can find that on the formula sheet as well. And of course, please watch my other videos where I show you how to put a variety of different serum formulas together. You can watch how to put it together in another video. But today's video was really about me helping you write your serum formula. And of course, if you've never written a formula before, please watch my video on how to write a cosmetic formula. And of course, we have our free masterclass, which will talk you through other important techniques like how to adjust pH and prepare your pH buffers. Well, there you go. That's how to write up and put together your very own serum formulas. Please search my YouTube channel if you have any questions on this topic and we also have a live Q&A replay where you can hear more about putting serum formulas together and of course see some questions and answers I take from the audience. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up. Please leave any questions or comments below and make sure you subscribe to receive notifications about all our videos. Happy formulating!